أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنهم من ينتظر وما بدلوا تبديلا There are two great personalities at the advent of Islam that all of us as Muslim owe our faith and religion to them If they were not existing at the time Islam would have been suffocated and choked at the inception and could not continue they had their profound effect on the formation and preserving Islam from the enemy. However, unfortunately, when you look at the written history, the history that the majority of Muslims receive and believe in, you see that those two personalities are very obscure and nameless. The reason is because history is also biased and has a prejudice. History written by the monarchs and rulers is very identical to media today. Today, media is very influential. It can shape up the public's opinion. Also, it can influence the country's political and military and economical agendas. Media play a major role in any nation. In fact, it is considered power number four in any country. Why? Because it can shape up the public opinion. It can make people believe in something or disbelieve in something. Therefore, history is similar to media. And history is usually written in the eyes or from the perspective of the rulers, the monarchs. That's why we say that it is biased. It can influence people by signifying events that are very ordinary or magnifying on ordinary people, very ordinary people that have no advantage over so many people. But since they are close to the ruler or their rulers themselves. You see, the written history has given them big significance, emphasizes on their lifestyle, takes their life from every aspect, and harbors many historians, many writers, many pundits to analyze their life, to talk about their details. Therefore, signify them in the eye of public. But in reality, they are no more than just an ordinary person. It is narrated that one day, one of those big monarchs that in fact was nothing but an ordinary person, when he made big mansion and he used to rule a big swath of land, he called upon dignitaries and people with high stature in society to come and congratulate him for the building of such palace. Then he looked at one of those wise people and told him, look at my majesty, look at this wonderful palace that he has spent millions of millions of gold dinars on that mansion. He asked that wise man, told him, how much you think my monarchy worth. The man told him, is nothing more than 200 dinar. As of today, for example, 200, 300 US dollars. The monarch laughed and said, this is only the cost of what I wear, my clothes. And he said, this is it. You worth what your clothes and dress worth. In reality, you do not worth anything. But why this monarch was so important and significant? 
because the written history has magnified its lenses on this monarch. While you see, there are very important people, important personalities that have influenced history and ch history has changed due to their effect, yet you see them, they are very obscure and very nameless in society. Why? Because the media has decided to ignore them. The media has decided to censor them. That's why the media, history, plays a very important role in any nation, in any civilization. In fact, the role of media is no less than the role of the sword, no less than the, world, the, the role of weapons, an army, a full army. Maybe a country has a full army, very potent army, but doesn't have the advertisement power. They lose, while a country with very simple army, they can win the battle due to the media role. Because the media focuses on certain events and ignores other events. The Holy Quran pay attention, attention to this fact. In fact, realize it and admonishes people not to follow in that trap. The Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says this. He says, فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا The hellfire will be the place of those people who will write the holy book by their hand. Meaning that they shape up the revelation. They even interfere in the words of God. They interfere in the history. They change the fact. Then it says, فَوَيْلٌ لَهُمْ مِمَّا كَتَبَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَوَيْلٌ لَهُمْ مِمَّا يَكْسِبُونَ Look at the admonishments, the warning and the threat that the Almighty gives to those people who change, who fabricate history, who fabricate the words of God. Unfortunately, monarchs, the ruthless monarchs, the despots could live for so many years due to this propaganda. The ordinary people, they make them significant. While the non-significant people, the unworthy of anything, they make them very significant. While those that are worthy in history, they make them insignificant. Today, as I said, or tonight, we are talking about two personalities. One is the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Abu Talib alayhi salam, who was the master of Mecca, who was the one who protected the Prophet from the very beginning of the message of the Prophet. And the second one is his beloved wife, the only mother of his children, Khadija alayhi salam. Tonight, 10th of Ramadan, coincides with the anniversary of her demise. That's why, as a tribute and as a favor to the Prophet, peace be upon him, we commemorate the memory of those two great personalities. When you look at the uncle of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Abu Talib, you see that there is abundance, wealth of information and narration in the Islamic texts, in the Islamic narration books that talks and signifies Abu Talib. But the problem of Abu Talib السلام, was that he was the father of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And we know that succeeding Ali ibn Abi Talib came two dynasties who shaped up the history of Islam who were against Ali ibn Abi Talib, who had animosity toward this man. Therefore, the guilt of Abu Talib was that he was fathering Ali ibn Abi Talib, and he had to pay the bigger price. Unfortunately, despite the wealth of information and abundance of evidence, of the support, of the unwavering support that Abu Talib 
showed to the Prophet, peace be upon him, there is a big chunk of Muslims. The majority of Muslim believe Muslims believe otherwise. They think that Abu Talib wal Billah died while he was kafir. Why? Because of the written history written by monarchs who had a position against Ali ibn Abi Talib and the progeny of Ali ibn Abi Talib. To start with, the first dynasty was Bani Umayyah, who was presented by Muawiyah. Muawiyah had a fight with Ali ibn Abi Talib. He wanted to win the, ba the battle of a propaganda, the war of a propaganda. Therefore, he harbored and bankrolled some of the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in order for them to state fabricated narrations against Abu Talib, against Imam Ali alayhi salam, and in the praise of Muawiyah and his predecessors. Unfortunately, some of those writers, they had themselves, they had ethical and moral issues and moral problems, such as al mughira ibn Shu'ba, such as Abu Huraira. Unfortunately, with the fabrications of those narrations, that unfortunately, many of the Muslim scholars corroborated these narrations in the books of histories, and those narrations have been taken as a fact. After the dynasty of Bani Umayyah, Bani al-Abbas came to power, who were power-crazed warlords, who had no concern but to clinch in power, to survive. Sometimes they were fighting each other. For example, al-Ma'mun, was fighting with Al-Amin. Al-Mutawakkil was killed by his son. They also had a stance against Abu Talib. Therefore, in order to show their legitimacy to power and discredit the progeny of Ali ibn Abi Talib, they claimed that Abu Talib was kafir. But when you look at the genuine history, the one that is written by both sects, by the Sunnis, and Shia, they all state the statements and the stance that this great man used to have when the Prophet, peace be upon him, was in Mecca. In one narration, he says, Yabna akhi, isda' bima tu'mar, fa innaka rafi'u ka'ban, wal a'la hasaban, wa nasaban, wallah la yutaluka ahadun bilisanih, illa talatu minna asinnatan hidal. He's telling his nephew, the Prophet, peace be upon him, telling him, follow what you have been ordered. You have been ordered a divine, divine message. Therefore, carry this message. A one who is mushrik, a one who is kafir, cannot say this because he, is, he knows that the nephew is going against his own religion. No one who is adherent to a certain ideology will help someone else against his own ideology to prevail. That was Abu Talib alayhi salam. There are plenty, plethora of evidence that, the, that Abu Talib alayhi salam used to, to support in a critical conditions, in a critical moments, the Prophet peace be upon him. The second personality that history has incurred injustice against, it is the beloved wife, the first wife, and the only mother of the children of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Khadija alayhi salam. Khadija was the only wife of the Prophet. We all know that the Prophet, peace be upon him, had multiple spouses, more than nine wives. But he didn't marry any of those while Khadija was alive. For well over 23 years, Khadija was the soul mate of the Prophet, peace be upon him. She was the partner, she was the confidant of the Prophet, peace be upon him. She was the one who witnessed the most spectacular, the most important event in history of mankind. 
and that was the Ba'tha, the prophethood, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, reached a prophethood. She was with him. She supported him. She stood in front of Kuffar and fought against them in supporting her beloved husband. The beautiful narration of the Prophet, peace be upon him, where he says, حَسْبُكَ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ arba." Four of the ladies you should consider. Maryam ibn Imran, Maryam. Wa Asiya bint Muzahim, Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh. Wa Khadija bint Khuwaylid. Wa Fatima bint Muhammad. Among the four noble ladies throughout the history of mankind. And let's not forget the beautiful narration of the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he said, Lawla ma lu Khadija. وَسَيْفُ عَلِي بْنَ أَبِي طَالِبْ لَمَا قَامَ لِلْإِسْلَامِ عَمُودٍ وَلَا خَضَرَّ لِلْإِيمَانِ عُودٍ If it were not the wealth of Khadija and the sword of Ali ibn Abi Talib, Islam could not rise up. When both Abu Talib and Khadija passed away in Mecca, the revelation came to the Prophet. O oh Muhammad, both of your confidants, both of your supporters have died. Therefore, it is the time for you to migrate from Mecca and go to Medina. يا عماد من لا عماد لا يا سند من لا سند لا يا ذخر من لا ذخر لا يا حرز من لا حرز لا يا غياث من لا غياث لا يا فخر من لا فخر لا يا عز من لا عز لا يا معين من لا معين لا يا أنيس من لا أنيس لا يا أمانة من لا أمانة لا سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب اللهم إني أسألك باسمك يا عاصم يا قائم يا دائم يا راحم يا سالم يا حاكم يا عالم يا قاسم يا قابض يا باسط سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا عاصم من استعصم يا راحم من استرحم يا غافر من استغفر يا ناصر من استنصر يا حافظ من استحفظ يا, يا مكرم من استكرم يا, يا مرشد من استرشد يا صريخ من استصرخ يا معين من استعان يا مغيث من استغاث سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت 
الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب Welcome back with continuation of Dua al Joshan al Kabir. We have reached segment number 28. The theme of segment number 28, we call it to cure the pain. And it goes like this Ya imadam al la imadale, Ya senadam al la senadale, Ya dukram al la dukrale, Ya herzam al la herzale. يا غياث من لا غياث له يا فخر من لا فخر له يا عز من لا عز له يا معين من لا معين له يا أنيس من لا أنيس له يا أمان من لا أمان له Translation O oh, supporter of the unsupported Helper of the helpless Protector of the unprotected Shield of the defenseless Hearer of the unheard appeal Pride of those without a pride. Honor of those of the honorous. Giver of aid to the unaid. Friend of the forsaken. Shelter of the shelterless. The dua describes the Almighty to be the fortress, to be the support, to be the helper, to be the hearer of those that don't have anyone to be heard. No one can hear them. No one can assist them. No one can come to their rescue. In today's world, only the powerful manages to survive and manages to take his right and sometimes fringes upon others' right. Why? Because they are powerful. Because they have military power because they have wealth, because they have the media power as we talked earlier, because people are terrified from them, because due to their influence, due to their stature, people listen to them. But then there are the weaks. Although they are sometimes they are right, but nobody pays attention to them. Sometimes they are in danger but no one pay attention to their hazardous moments. The reason is because they are not supported by anyone. The segment says that you have a support and the support that you have outweigh any other support. Do not feel that you are estranged or you are lonely or you are weak as long as you have your connection with the Lord because he's the best supporter. He's the best helper. He's the one who can rescue from the most imminent danger. Imagine Yunus alayhi salam, the prophet, in a three darkness, in the darkness of the stomach of the whale, in the darkness of the sea and the ocean, and then in the darkness of the night. He declared, Subhanaka inni kuntu min al-thalimeen wa dhannoon id dhahaba mughatiban fadhanna an lan naqdara alayh fanada fi al-dhulumat in three darknesses fanada fi al-dhulumat Subhanaka inni kuntu min al-thalimeen Then immediately the Lord says, Fastajabna lahu despite the fact that he was so weak, so helpless, so desperate, we came to his rescue. فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمْ We rescued him from his anxiety and listen to the important segment of the ayah. The latter part of the ayah is more important than the first part of the ayah where it describes Yunus. The latter part of the ayah says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِلْ مُؤْمِنِينَ In the same token, 
that we have rescued Yunus, we can also rescue. We will come to the refuge of the believers as long as they have trust in the Lord, as long as their belief and their certainty is strong in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the message of this segment is do not be in despair. There is always someone who can get you out of your pain. No matter how painful you are, no matter how severe is your pain, the Almighty is the one and the only one who is capable to get you out of your misery. Then the segment goes and says, Ya man la izzala. The honor of those who do not have honor. Today, people who have honor, either they take refuge to their wealth, to their tribe, to their nationality, to their powerful government and military, to their prestige and fame in the society. That's how they gain their honor. But the Almighty says that those are all bogus one. Those are all temporary one. The one with an honor is the one who is connected to the Lord. He will gain his honor. Remember Ibrahim alayhi salam, the patriarch. One day he was he by himself alone facing the entire nation. Entire nation. Not only the monarch, not only the government and the military were against him. Every single member of the community turned against Ibrahim. Why? Because he has challenged their faith. He has challenged their identity when they're worshipping idols. Now everybody turned against him. Everybody collaborated with each other to punish Ibrahim. But Ibrahim stand, stood alone in front of the entire nation. But he was not alone per se. Rather, he had the strongest support when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala boasts and say that, قُلْنَا يَا نَعُ كُونِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ Ibrahim. The fire that burns everything, God has changed it to be cold and peace on Ibrahim. Why? Because of the support of the Lord. Now, if you support Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you support the cause of God, God would not let you down. As he says, Those who fight, who struggle in our way, then we will rescue them. We will show them the guidelines, the guidance. In another word, it says, إِن تَنْصُرَ اللَّهِ فَلَاغَ إِن يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهِ if God comes to your rescue, then you always will be victorious. This is a fundamental formula. You stay with God, God will stay with you. This is the segment number 28. Then segment number 29. The theme of the segment is to build to build up defense, where it says, Allahumma inni as'aluka bismika, ya asamu, ya qa'imu, ya da'imu, ya rahim, ya salimu, ya hakimu, ya alimu, ya qasimu, ya qabilu, ya basit. The theme again is to build up defense, where it says, I beseech thee in thy name, O the protector, O oh, the persist, per, persistent, O oh, the eternal, the merciful, accorder of peace, omniscient, distributor, O oh, preventer, O oh, opener. The term a protector, awesome. It shields, it shields you against the enemy. It shields you against the barrier. No matter how 
is the challenge, how difficult and how severe the situation is, how brutal the enemy is, how dangerous the situation is. God will prevent from that danger in you. Come to your support. Sometimes there are very difficult moments that even the greatest of prophets of the Almighty feel terrified of that moment, feel very concerned of that moment. For example, our beloved prophets, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he fought against the idol worshippers, the pagans of Mecca. He won over them. Yet there was a monumental challenge that even the Prophet, peace be upon him, was very concerned with, was very terrified with. He could not even sleep for days and nights because of that concern. And that concern was when he had to appoint Ali ibn Abi Talib as his successor. He feared that the Muslims, not the pagans, not the idol worshippers, not the real enemies, rather the same supporters, those who would support him, he was very afraid of them. He was very concerned that they will disobey him. He was very concerned not on his safety or the personal sa safety of his cousin Ali ibn Abi Talib. Rather, he was concerned with the safety of Islam. He was afraid that people will revert back to Jahiliyyah, will disobey him, would not listen to him. But the message came to the Prophet, O oh, the Prophet, what you have to do is to deliver the message and God will protect you. Ya ayyuha rasul ballagh ma unzila ilayka min rabbik wa in lam taf'al fama ballaghta risalata wallahu ya'simuka min an-nas you should go ahead and reveal the command that God has given you and you have to appoint Ali ibn Abi Talib as the imam as the true successor of you and God will protect you God will shield you against even your best of friends, against your companions, against your nation, and against your enemy. You have to deliver the message and leave the rest to the Lord. So this is the word Asim, taking the shield. God becomes a shield between you and the enemy, between you and danger. The third segment Segment number three, the theme is to win a war. Where the Almighty says, Ya Asama man istasama, Ya Rahima man istarhama, Ya Ghafira man istaghfara, Ya Nasara man istansara, Ya Hafira man istahfara, Ya Mukrima man istakrama, Ya Murshida man istarshada, Ya Mus Ya Saricha man istasracha, Ya Muina man istaana, Ya Mugitha. <clears throat> the translation goes, O oh, the protector of he who seeks his protection, merciful to he who requests his mercy, forgiver of the implore his forgiveness, helper of he who asks for his help, protector of he who seeks his protection, magnanimous to he who seeks his magnanimity guide for he who seeks his guidance, giver of aid to he who seek his aid, rescuer of he who appeals to him. Sometimes we take refuge into to certain entities, certain powers. If I run out of cash, I go to my father, I go to my relative, I go to the bank, I ask my friends, I ask my boss at work to get some cash. Sometimes they support, sometimes they fail to support. If I have an emergency situation in the middle of night, I call my best friend or I call my brother to come and risk me, rescue me. 
Sometimes they do, and sometimes they fail. They are unable to deliver and protect or come to our rescue. The only one who is capable and who will fulfill that whole task in fullest and best is the Almighty. As the segment says, If you truly go back and seek refuge from God, God is the one who will take you to safety. If you truly believe in and ask God for His mercy, He will bestow His mercy on you. If you go back to Him and ask for redemption, ask for forgiveness only to Him, then you will see the answer available. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in these holy nights and days to find our way in relying on Him. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this world, man is the target towards which the arrows of death fly and is like that wealth whose destruction is quickened by hardships. In this world, with every drink there is suffocation and with every morsel there is cocking. Here no one gets anything unless he loses something else and not a day of his age advances till a day passes out from his life. Thus. We are helpers of death and our lives are the targets of morality. How then can we expect everlasting life since the night and day do not raise anything high without quickly arranging for the destruction of whatever they have built and for the splitting as under of whatever they have joined together.